Hi, this is David Dreyer, and I'm privileged to be the ranking Republican on the House Rules Committee. Thanks for joining this video entitled Parliamentary Boot Camp, a series where we try to make House rules and procedures a little easier to understand. It's important to note that process is substance, and having an understanding of the rules is critical to successfully implementing legislation. As I said, we've called this video The Problem with Pre-Printing, and it looks at the consideration of appropriations bills under the Democratic majority. An appropriations bill is a bill to provide funding for government programs. The Constitution makes it very clear that the government can't spend any money without an appropriation. The Rules Committee sets the terms of debate for bills in the House, including what amendments are debated, for how long, and in what order they're considered. In describing the different kinds of rules, it's easiest to think of a spectrum. On one side are open rules, which allow virtually any member to offer any amendment. On the other side are closed rules, which prohibit any amendments. In the past, under both Democratic and Republican majorities, appropriations bills were considered under open rules. This allowed for a free-flowing debate where virtually any idea could be offered by any member as long as the amendment met the other rules of the House. Last year, the majority changed that. They required that amendments be pre-printed so that Chairman Obie and the Appropriations Committee could see the amendments that members plan to offer. As we'll see in this very uh, clear example from last year's Veterans Appropriations Bill, the pre-printing requirement actually shuts off the free exchange of ideas on the floor, and members are restricted from even changing their amendments if there is a technical violation to House rules. Let's begin by watching uh, my colleague Steve Booyer from Indiana, who serves as the ranking Republican on the Veterans Affairs Committee, as he tries to get funding for solar panels on VA facilities. All right, I have an amendment at the desk. The clerk will designate the amendment. Amendment number 29, printed in the congressional record, offered by Mr. Booyer of Indiana. For what purpose does the gentleman from Texas rise? Chairman, I reserve a point of order on the gentleman's amendment. Point of order is reserved. Chair recognizes the gentleman from Indiana. Mr. Chairman, my amendment would provide $150 million of the amount appropriated in the Department of Veterans Affairs minor construction account for the installation of solar electronic roof applications. In this next clip, Mr. Booyer tries to fix his amendment to avoid the point of order. If this were an open rule, he could just offer a slightly different amendment. But because there is a pre-printing requirement, he can only change his amendment by unanimous consent. Now, um, at this point, I would like to clarify the amendment, and I have a unanimous consent request. Uh, I mean, objection is heard. I did not even state a unanimous consent. Go ahead. Go ahead. Thank you. I have a unanimous consent request, Mr. Chairman. I would uh, ask that at the end of my amendment, after the word applications, insert the following, quote, at VA medical facilities, end quote. Is there an objection? I, I object. Yes, sir. All right. I have a unanimous consent request. Mr. State his request. I would insert that um, on that I would strike the amount $150 million and insert the amount of $75 million. That would be my unanimous consent request. Is there an objection? Yes, I object. Since subcommittee chairman Shed Edwards objected to Mr. Booyer's efforts to fix his amendment, the ranking Republican, Zach Womp, points out the problems with a floor process which requires the pre-printing of amendments. And, and again, we are bipartisan partners here, but I would point out that had we not had the pre-printing requirement that was talked about earlier that we're living under, the fluidity of modifying amendments or amounts on the floor is part of the way that the appropriations process works. We do have a great bill, but the neat thing about appropriations is when you bring a great bill to the floor, the members of the House, all of them, 
do have the ability to make changes or make improvements or make suggestions. And frankly, that is what the gentleman's trying to do. Finally, the Democratic majority torpedoes the amendment for purely procedural reasons, saying that the program was not specifically authorized by law. Mr. Booyer tries to argue that the installation of solar panels is covered under the general authority for the Veterans Administration, but is ultimately unsuccessful. Mr. Chairman, I make a point of order against the amendment because it provides an appropriation for an unauthorized program and therefore violates Clause 2 of Rule 21. First, it's very unfortunate that solar would be kicked out on attempt at a technicality. I know that it doesn't we go right to the point of order. The amendment refers to Section 81, so it's Title 38 U.S. Code, Section 8103. Provides VA the authority to construct, quote, construct, end quote, and, quote, alter, end quote. So authorization, so when, when, when the chairman said, wait a minute, you don't have the authorization, I would appeal to, to the chair that general authority is, exists within the minor construction statute for us to do this. And that would be my argument on the point of order. Uh, yes, I'd, I'd just say briefly, I, I think the chair has received plenty of advice on this point of order, and I'd now like to ask once again for ruling of the chair. Chair is prepared to rule. Having reviewed the amendment and entertained argument on both, uh, from both parties on the point of order, the chair is unable to conclude that the item of appropriation in question is authorized in law. So we see that the majority is trying to say that their floor process will allow any amendment, but they're actually using the rules to block out common sense amendments that would be permissible under a more open process. So while the majority calls rules with pre-printing requirements open, we see that they are actually anything but that. I hope you enjoyed this presentation. Please be sure to check our website in the future for more installments in our video boot camp series and uh, keep a free-flowing debate going.